I'd like to introduce to you Anna Yu. Welcome Anna Thanks. to Teaching and Training Women. She's come to speak to us about Jesus, the one we all need. Now Anna lives in Tamora, which is out in the Riverina with a population of about 6,000. You're out there ministering with your husband Derek and with your four children. Yes. Your eldest child is? Seven. And the youngest? One and a half. One and a half. And how many boys, how many girls? Two boys, two girls. Good. Excellent. That's lovely. You're a very busy lady though, no doubt. Um, now we've been talking with each other and you tell me you grew up in a Christian family which you really appreciated and that as a child you understood Jesus was your saviour but then you came to realise relationship with him was more important and one of the key moments for that was in high school was a uh, lunchtime group and it was a frog day. Yes, tell so me it was the first that. time I finally went along to this Christian group after many excuses um, and it was frog day and I was encouraged and reminded to frog fully rely on God. Uh, and it was great seeing a bunch of teenagers um, take Jesus seriously enough to take a lunchtime out of school um, and meet together and encourage each other and bring their friends along. Um, and I just kept going since that day until I finished high school. Frog day, okay, fully relying on God, that's good. Then you moved into university and near the end of your studies, things became a bit overwhelming because you had a three week period in which to finish your honours thesis, give a presentation, run a missions program or something and run your church youth group things didn't go so well so yes what did God so I was, I was attempting to juggle all of these things at the same time um, and one night we were walking through chinatown on the way to organize an evangelistic event and a close christian sister was walking with me and so i was just telling her there's a mountain of work to do um, it's all a bit overwhelming uh, and she just stopped with me there in the middle of chinatown with the umbrella up because it was raining around uh, and she prayed for me and that helped uh, that perspective changed a little bit from the mountain of work and the battle uh, to a little molehill uh, that you know step by step took and um, it was just helpful to have other Christians around me supporting me checking up on me and helping me reassess that calendar um, to realize I didn't actually need to go to these all these events for mm. God um, I just needed God mm. and to seek him and to cling to him mm. And you mentioned a transactional view of God. That's what you had before this event, when things were busy. What do you mean by a transactional view of God? Yeah, so around the same time, uh, I was lying in bed thinking, oh, it's all really hard work. Uh, I might have been a bit burnt out then. And um, it was everything was just work for God. Um, and so I think I had that transactional view where it was God provides salvation and I obey with works and deeds. Yeah, okay. um, and so it was just a lot of work done um, and maybe not a lot of joy mm -hmm. and uh, I remember being the, the deep question inside was you know thinking does God care and being ready to throw in the white towel um, and walk away from Jesus um, because I was like well does God really care mm -hmm. um, and the same time that I had that thought um, God put his thought in my mind which was um, you're not going to walk that path um, he's not going to let his sheep stray um, I've got you in double hands. So I am so wrapped up in Jesus' hands and even around that, the Father's got his hands around me. Um, and that comes from John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. It says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. So that's Jesus talking. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And so... My life is so safe and secure in the hands of Jesus, in the hands of the Father mm -hmm. of God, that no one can can mm -hmm. get a hold of me, and He won't let me go either. And and that's what I needed to know mm -hmm. that um, Jesus cares and that He's with me mm -hmm. through all of that. So it's not just um, uh, I do, and it's not just a transaction between mm -hmm. you and God. It's a relationship He's building, okay? Because He's help holding you tight. Now we're going to move to now when you're a mum with children. And uh, things get very busy, as they do. But you're a bit of a DIY, have I got that right? Yes, DIY yes. person, which means do-it-yourself person. Um, so what has God taught you through being a DIY? No, before that, tell us what you like to do and what you've made. Uh, so it involves my creative side of the brain, designing things, making things, um, you know, crochet, um, woodwork, soldering. Oh. Um, all different bits, you know, salvaging bits and pieces with here and hands. There. Things with my hands, yeah. Mm. Um, and, you know, I've made a knife block, um, a picnic bench that 
converts into a, a picnic table that converts into a bench and um, so other, other things are all around the house. Yeah. Um, and fixing things, salvaging things and upcycling. And fixing them? Yeah, that's excellent. I need someone like you at my house. Um, now you've said you've learned lots about, about God from your DIY experiences. Yes. Yep. Uh, it's often, where I, a lot of the things I've learned is from when I've been frustrated when things don't go the, the way they uh, intend or you know go to plan. Um, and so um, this was particularly last year. Um, it, it takes a lot of time to undo mistakes and to fix things. Mm. And um, even with Noah, um, God didn't completely wipe us out. He um, bit by bit brought about a plan to restore creation and to uh, bring about a plan to bring people back to himself and to restore that relationship. And so, you know, it took thousands of years for Jesus to come and um, on the scene. And he's always welcoming people to that relationship. Mm. So my kids... They think I can fix anything. But they legitimately <laughs> ask me, you know, can you fix this? Uh, but I know that I can't. Um, I try to restore things the way it was intended to the best of my abilities. Um, it cost me time and effort and materials. Yep. Um, but for God to fix the fallout from sin, it cost him um, the life of his son. Mm -hmm. And that's um, to bring about um, restoring creation and the, the people he loves. Mm -hmm. um, for me, if I look at something and... It's not worth the cost or the time or the material um, or it's just too far gone then it goes in the bin mm. but god sees our brokenness um, mm. and our humanity and he didn't give up on it mm. and he didn't think we were too far gone mm. he gave up the life of his son uh, to bring us back to him and he thought it was worth the life of his son that that's how mm. much he loves us mm. and that's how he sees us that he, we are precious in his eyes mm. and so i think it's often in the hard times the stressful times that um, we turn to God in our need, in our desperation. Uh, the magnificence of God is seen uh, against the lows of our life. And the power and sovereignty of God is shown when uh, things are out of our control. Um, and I think it's easier, easy to chug along in life when we aren't in those situations. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think what was happening was that DIY mentality often carried across into that every day when I wasn't so desperately seeking God. And, you know, I have my hands, my body, my mind, I'm capable of doing all these things. Uh, but in essence, I was going through life doing it yourself. Yeah. And that's not a great thing. Yeah. Um, but the one who did do it himself, the uncreated one, he DIY'd all of creation. That's right. And um, to fix the fallout from sin, he DIY'd it and took yes. it upon himself to bring Jesus. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, we cannot save ourselves, but for grace. And so Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 says, um, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So it's a continual life lesson that I'm learning, that it's mm. not my works and my relying on self, but God's grace. Mm. So it's a frog again, fully relying on God. He's the one who brings salvation, he's the one who enables it, and uh, he's the DIY person. Yeah, that's excellent. Thanks, Anna. Um, now come more recently to today with a busy family. Um, how have, what have you seen God teaching you in the last couple of months, hmm. last year or so? What's he been teaching? So the last year was particularly stressful. We had newborn renovations, ministry all starting up. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I was learning the importance of church family, that uh, we've got a lot to learn from each other, that we can carry each other in those times. Mm -hmm. uh, but even in the day-to-day, -day, um, uh, particularly a rough day last year, um, God, the invisible God, brings tangible people into our lives to minister to us even if they don't realize it and so there was this one time um, we were going to the shop to get a newspaper and it was um, the baby and a daughter and the baby fell asleep and in the past I'd often prayed this prayer um, that if there was a sleeping child in the car that um, there would be someone I knew on the street who happened to be there at the exact time I parked uh, to look after the child and so I could duck in the shops to get yes. the newspaper and come back out yeah. Um, and it was that day that God chose to answer that prayer. And so I was trying to convince my daughter to go get the newspaper. She didn't want, not want to do that. And this lady had been watching this interaction for about five minutes and I'd seen her before. Uh, and so she comes over and says, oh, you know, I, I'll just help watch the baby and stay with, with the car for a little while. And so I ended up being able to go duck into the shops to, yeah, to get it. Uh, that day, God answered that prayer. And yes. then immediately after, baby woke up anyway. And so we went, drove off to the next shop to get the next thing. Uh, which was a couple of replacement torch light bulbs, uh, which they weren't in stock, so I had to place it on order. 
And then um, the sales guy was, you know, putting through the thing and mucking around the few torches and ended up giving a few to my daughter as a wow. gift. And so that was just two small mercies on the, uh, you know, stressful hard day. on a stressful hard day. And, um, you know, that was just God ministering mm. to me at that time. Mm. And I think um, even if we don't realize it, um, God's using people around mm. us. And um, it's a way for us to minister to other people too, um, mm. whether it's being available or helping or listening to someone or, you know, bringing mm. a meal to them, being the hands and feet that bring the gospel and the mouths that speak it to them. Yeah. Mm. And you mentioned before God cares. That was a day where God God showed that He yeah. cared. But it's also taught you that we can do that to other people as well. That's excellent. One more question before you go: Is there something you would like to tell the women who are listening? Something that's on your heart that you think, ah, oh, I'd love to tell the women this. Um, whether we realize it or not, we all need God um, in the hard times, but all the time as well. Uh, particularly in the difficult times, uh, God doesn't always take away the circumstances, but mm -hmm. he is with us through it. Yes. Um, so Isaiah 43 says, uh, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, who formed Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Mm -hmm. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's difficult times and seasons where I've looked for help, um, great church family. and But even when I'm alone, um, sometimes I've wanted support and it's not always been there. Um, and I'm looking for rescue from other people and they will always fail. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that mm -hmm. Jesus is and always has been there and he's the one who's always steadfast and reliable, that's... Mm -hmm really something to cling on to mm -hmm. and um, I think my story is not particularly flash I don't have a dramatic conversion story mm -hmm. um, but that just shows you that it's little moments in life that you might need to take mm -hmm. a stock of and also that God works through the ordinary and every day mm -hmm. um, that he is a faithful God mm -hmm. um, even in the boring mm -hmm. of life um, and that Jesus lives 30 something years of humanity as a person uh, gave up his divine privileges to walk among us and to give his life for us. Um, and I have nothing else to say that except that I consider my life worth nothing to me, except that I might finish the race and complete the task that the mm. Lord Jesus has given to me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Excellent, because Jesus is the one we all need. And your life testifies that completely. Thank you very much, Anna, for sharing that with us. Thank you for being willing to be interviewed. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.